Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for connecting on this call as we study through the book of Acts. And we also focus on the life of Apostle Paul, a very um, important personality as far as the growth of the church is concerned. So we'll pray and then we'll get into uh, today's um, you know, section, whatever we have. So let me just uh, pray right now and then uh, we'll go ahead. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you, Lord, for all these weeks and your grace, O oh God, to study through the book of Acts. Father, we pray that you will give us the understanding of the many things, Lord, that have unfolded in the lives of uh, your people in times past. Father, to gain insights, O oh God, so that, Lord, in our lifetime, we will be able to walk in the power of the Spirit, the way they walked, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for their testimony of great courage, their testimony of a great passion. And Father, we just pray that uh, you will fill us with the same, O oh God, and help us to achieve greater heights for the glory of your name. Father, come with myself and uh, each student in this class, O oh God, speaking uh, good health and strength and focus as we uh, continue, Lord, learning from the book of Acts. Thank you once again for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, so we started with the missionary journeys of Apostle Paul, and we said that uh, he uh, wasn't there in the picture for quite a while. That is uh, right after his conversion on the road to Damascus. There was a silent period after which in Acts 11, he's brought to the church of Antioch in Syria um, and uh, he's ministering in that church and eventually uh, he's part of the leadership of that church. And during the time of ministry to God, God reveals to the team that there are a certain set of people who must uh, go ahead with the call of God on their lives. And so uh, it's like he steps into this new season of uh, becoming a missionary or uh, a minister who is taking the gospel to various parts of the region. Uh, he, along with Barnabas, set out on a journey. Uh, we saw the maps and we saw the regions. We said that the, there will be the spread of the gospel in the Judean uh, region as well as the uh, uh, you know, uh, parts of Asia Minor uh, and also some parts of Europe. Uh, we saw how they start the journey from, uh, you know, Antioch and then they start moving uh, forward. We saw they came to this place called Paphos and over there they experienced a very real opposition uh, that was demonic in nature because there was uh, a very intelligent man, Sergius Paulus, who wanted to know about God, but because of the demonic hindrance, uh, he was unable to receive the truth of the gospel. However, Paul, he exercises his spiritual authority as a minister and uh, he uh, uh, overcomes Elimus or Bar Jesus and the power uh, that he was exercising on uh, Sergius Paulus. And we saw how the team was able to make an impact at the highest level. So throughout the book of Acts, we'll see that the communities that are being touched, the people groups that are being touched will be varied. So sometimes we will see people who are probably in the lower strata of society, uh, but uh, then there will be people who are uh, quite high up uh, in, in the ranks, uh, in the government even, whom Paul and other ministers will go and speak to. So that's what we saw. Somebody who has great influence uh, comes to know about the Lord Jesus and his uh, saving grace. And then later on, you know, after uh, that particular incident at Paphos, we saw how uh, the team moved on to a place known as um, Antioch of uh, Syria. And over there, there was a good reception of the team because they were preaching uh, in the synagogues and people were quite curious. They wanted to know, they wanted to understand the message. Uh, but slowly, uh, even though you know initially everything went well, we saw that opposition started rising uh, to quite a 
strong degree uh, and at that point you know paul and the team they decide that they will go and minister to the gentiles so uh, on a particular set day they go and uh, great crowds gather and they start to uh, share about the uh, gospel uh, but this again was a threat for the authorities of the region or the city and uh, they really wanted paul and uh, their team out so there was a conflict uh, in Antioch. Okay, so that's where we were at. Uh, so let's uh, let's just maybe start reading from the end of Acts chapter 13 and then we will uh, move on to Acts chapter 14. So let's uh, start from verse 44 of Acts chapter 13. Uh, would somebody like to read please? You just read the end portion of uh, Acts uh, 13 and then you know we'll pause for a bit and then move on to Acts 14. Yeah would someone like to read it out? Can hear me now? Yeah. Acts chapter 13 was on the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and contradicting and blaspheming. They opposed the things spoken by Paul. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. But since you rejected and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Now when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as has been appointed to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women. And the chief men of the city raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from the from their region and they shook off the dust from their feet against them and came to Iconium and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. All right, so uh, we're seeing that uh, they have finally left that place, they've left that region of uh, um, Antioch of uh, Syria and uh, Paul and Barnabas will make a journey to a different place. Now, uh, we, as we look at the, the, these places, right, uh, we initially talked about uh, Antioch of Syria. And Antioch of Syria, that would be the um, home church of uh, Apostle Paul and Barnabas. A uh, couple of uh, things about Antioch of Syria would be that, um, um, you know, it was located about 300 miles uh, north of Jerusalem. Uh, and Antioch of Syria uh, was quite a uh, large city uh, in those times. Uh, so you could estimate something like 500,000 people who were uh, dwelling there. And uh, it was quite well developed, uh, somewhat like a commercial center and had uh, many uh, wonderful features. Okay? Now, when we talk about a place like uh, Antioch of Syria, Antioch of Syria, um, you know, we, they, we saw that there was this journey, right? So from Antioch of Syria, they went to uh, Seleucia, Salamis, and then, you know, we uh, saw the whole thing that happened at Paphos. And then finally, Perga is where they were at. So from Perga, it's about 100 miles, okay, this particular place. Uh, and uh, it had a good uh, population of both the Jews uh, as well as uh, the Gentiles. Um, and uh, yeah, there was good ministry done. But then I think Antioch of Syria is more popular um, compared to Antioch of uh, Syria. Uh, now that things are not working out in this particular place, okay, they will move on to another place, which is about 
60 miles east uh, and this uh, place is called as Iconium. Uh, now Iconium uh, it was a city which was surrounded by uh, a high wall and uh, we'll see that uh, in Iconium again Paul and team will spend a good amount of time uh, ministering and uh, speaking uh, from God's word to the people. Uh, and of course, after Iconium, you know, they will move on to Lystra, which is uh, again about 18 miles. Um, but we'll come to Lystra soon. And a lot of wonderful things uh, will happen in the in the city of uh, Lystra. Now, I was also talking about a third person, right, in the team. Who was that? Who some somebody who joined the journey and somebody who left the journey. Who's that individual? Yes. John Mark, okay, John Mark. Uh, he um, started off on the journey, but he left. And I was talking about the personality of Paul and how um, it was displeasing for Paul to have somebody like John Mark, you know, who, uh, according to Paul, maybe he felt that uh, this individual lacked focus, and uh, therefore, you know, he was not very happy with it. So now let's uh, move on to Acts 14. Iconium and Lystra, that's what we are uh, expecting to read about here. So let's go ahead and uh, read the passage. We will begin at verse 1 and till verse 7. So that is the account in a place called Iconium. Uh, I just request different ones of us to uh, read, um, you know, faster. Uh, I could also narrate the story, but then I just felt that if we read through, then you will register better. And that's why, you know, we are giving a little bit of time to quickly read through and then uh, continue explaining. So kindly, uh, uh, you know, step in and read. Thank you. Acts chapter 14, verses 1 to 7. Now it happened in Iconium that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews and so spoke that great multitude before of the Jews and of the Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poised their minds against the brethren. Therefore they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided part sided with the Jews and part with the apostles. And when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to Lystra and there be cities of uh, Lyconia and to the surrounding region. And they were preaching the gospel there. All right, so uh, some good ministry is going on in Iconium. Uh, again, they go to the synagogue of the Jews because that's an easy place for them to go and begin to speak. So in the synagogues, there would be opportunity for any uh, learned person to come and uh, share. And that's the opportunity that Paul and his team took up. So they go to the synagogue and uh, they speak to a great multitude of Jews and it also says Greeks. So even the Greek people believed. Uh, but you see the opposition which the apostles had in the city of uh, Jerusalem or Paul experienced in Sidia, uh, the same opposition seems to be continuing here. Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. So. The opposition is continuing to uh, uh, such a point that now they have to leave this city as well. Uh, but one good thing in Iconium is the Bible says that they stayed there a long time uh, speaking boldly in the Lord. So we have to remember that the whole first missionary journey, the entire duration of that period is uh, you know, about two years, roughly two years. Uh, and uh, so in each of these regions, they would have spent you know a couple of uh, months couple of weeks even uh, right so but then they are just going ahead and making that journey the exact duration though it says therefore they stayed there a long time uh, what is that long time 
uh, uh, not very, very sure or exact about that. Uh, but they spent a good amount of time there. They were bearing witness about the Lord Jesus. And uh, they did the usual kind of ministry. You remember when we started uh, studying the book of Acts, we said uh, that the Lord Jesus, all that he taught and did. Uh, so there is a combination of uh, the teaching ministry as well as the healing or the um, you know deliverance or supernatural. So uh, uh, I hope we can see that the apostles and now this is a daughter church, isn't it? From where uh, Barnabas and Paul are going ahead to do the ministry. They are continuing the same pattern. So it's not like anything has changed. So there is the preaching of the gospel. There's the teaching of the doctrine. Uh, and then, of course, there is the demonstration of the power of God. So uh, in Iconium, uh, scriptures tell us that there were signs and wonders uh, done by their hands. So they ministered in the same way. Uh, and that is what even today, though we may be quite far away from the years when uh, these cities were impacted, but um, we can have the same pattern of ministry, both in the word and in the supernatural. Now, uh, they moved out of this particular place. Uh, and one more thing to note is that uh, there was a serious threat to them because there was a violent attempt uh, by both the Gentiles and Jews. So there was some part of uh, people in both these communities who were unbelieving. Uh, who even tried to abuse and stone Paul and uh, Barnabas. And uh, because of this situation, they fled. Okay, and now something for us to think about is, you know, we keep saying that the disciples prayed and asked God for boldness. God, give us more boldness that uh, signs may be done to the hands of your apostles. Uh, but over here we see this response to persecution where mighty men like Paul and Barnabas are fleeing the place. Okay, so then what do you have to say about that? Because earlier they're asking God for boldness to continue the ministry uh, in the face of persecution. But over here, they're leaving the place. So any thoughts regarding that? Doesn't it seem like a contrast? Why did they leave? They should have just stayed there and uh, continued, no matter how dangerous it seemed. Yes, yes, Lubega. I literally think there are two two factors at, at play uh -huh. fact, factor number one is the, the being compelled by the holy spirit being directed by the holy spirit because right yeah number two is their passion they were passionate for the gospel okay okay i think that's what i have to say that's true but i'm asking you why did they flee doesn't that sound very cowardly to leave the place and sort of run away. Ma'am, maybe it was not the time for them to be to be martyrs for Christ. Okay. It was not the right time. They got God's time for them to die. So they used wisdom to flee. Very correct. So uh, that uh, last uh, part that you said, Rosalind, about they use their wisdom. So for us to witness for Christ in the midst of persecution, uh, we really need God's wisdom. We need to discern the timings. We need to discern how God may want us to minister to the people. And if we sense that the Holy Spirit is actually leading us out of the place, there is nothing wrong to um, flee and find a place of safety. Because we see mighty men like Paul and Barnabas doing that. So there is absolutely nothing wrong, uh, you know, with, with uh, uh, moving in the direction of the Holy Spirit and to find protection for 
oneself. However, uh, when there are times when uh, we must continue standing up for what we believe in, uh, for example, if you look at people like Stephen, uh, who was martyred, uh, it's very unfortunate that a man like him uh, was martyred. Or uh, we know the end of Apostle Paul's life, that uh, he is uh, imprisoned, and then even he uh, becomes a martyr uh, for the gospel. Uh, now, it's not that you know he escaped, but uh, as Rosalind rightly put, this was not the right time uh, for him to uh, endanger his life because there were so many things ahead of him for him to fulfill God's purpose, and which is why they had the wisdom to flee. And now they are coming to places uh, such as Lystra and uh, uh, Derb, or you know, I've heard people call that Derby as well. These are cities of uh, Lyconia uh, and the surrounding region, and they went there to preach the gospel. So what they're doing is they're looking at open doors as the Holy Spirit is showing them, and then move the same pattern of ministry, preach, teach, signs, wonders, miracles. As people start to begin, then uh, they continue the work. But if there is a threat, then we are seeing that they are moving to the next region. So that's how uh, it's, it's going on right now. So now they are in Lystra. And what happens in Lystra? A very, very notable miracle. Uh, you, we, uh, all of us, when we look at this miracle, you know, we can uh, uh, relate to another miracle which happened in the book of Acts. So I uh, let us read this particular miracle and then we will discuss. So uh, can one of us read from verse 8 to verse 18, please? And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking, Paul observing, them in, observing him intently and seeing that he had failed to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Now, when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voice, saying in the Lyo, Lyconian language, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. And Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermas because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in front of the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, intending to sacrifice with the multitudes. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul uh, heard this, they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude, crying out and saying, Men, why are you doing this, these things? We also are men with the same nature as you, and preach to you that you should turn from these useless things to the living God who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that is in the all that all things that are in them, who in bygone generations allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness, in that he did good, gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, they could scarcely restrain multitudes from sacrificing to them. Uh, thank you for reading, John. Uh, and my question to all of us is, can you think of any other passage in the book of Acts which is similar? Mm. Right. Um, do you want to say it <laughs> to the mic? Yeah, there was a man in the, in the beautiful game with Peter. Mm. Uh, what are the other similarities? Yeah, he was crippled too, uh -huh. but I think there are some differences also. <laughs> Maybe some of the similarities. Uh, I don't think he heard Peter preaching, but here we see the crippled man. He had actually faith, and uh, uh, that one of the differences I, I was looking into. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, uh, Jatina. Uh, so you're right. Uh, we see a 
resemblance uh, such as Acts chapter 3 where we have Apostle Peter uh, and of course John with him go uh, to the temple and again beautiful uh, I didn't show you all pictures at that time but if you are interested I can quickly maybe show you now let's see Okay. Okay. So, just uh, you know, for your curiosity, nothing else. It's not so such an important picture or anything. Um, but uh, yeah, I I'll see if I can make this larger. Yeah. So if you can see uh, the entrance to the temple, and then you have a gate over here which is known as gate beautiful and this is where the people begging for arms used to uh, stay uh, and you know they would walk into so people would walk into the temple in this uh, manner uh, and uh, the surrounding of the temple right so this is like the outside compound of the temple the surrounding region of the temple is where uh, you have something known as uh, solomon's porch so you remember the man who was sitting here, Peter came and the difference is he uh, like uh, though he was also crippled from his mother's womb 40 years, uh, he could not walk. He was lame actually, he was lame uh, from his uh, mother's womb. Um, but Peter ministered by uh, you could say something like a gift of faith. So he held his hand and uh, uh, he just sort of you know uh, made him stand. Uh, he pulled him up and then the Bible says strength came into his feet and this man he stood up and uh, we know the Bible says that uh, he was uh, jumping and all and you know like in Solomon's porch uh, that area he was just sort of running around and uh, people saw him and people were very amazed. Um, so the stories are similar, but some of the differences would be that in the case of Lystra, it's a crippled man, uh, and the this man, he is actually listening to the preaching of Paul. So the person involved in Acts chapter 14 is Paul. And uh, uh, by listening to the preaching, something happens to this man. What is that? He seems to develop faith. Now we all know that uh, uh, passage from Romans, Romans chapter 10 verse 17, which says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So there's a difference. Uh, the way Paul ministered, uh, it's not necessarily faith invoking uh, because we know this uh, beggar, he looked at uh, Peter, uh, and uh, in Acts chapter 3 and he was expecting maybe money isn't it that's what Peter and John they said uh, we, uh, silver and gold we don't have but what we have we give to you uh, in the name of Jesus rise up and walk so uh, they ministered by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, whereas over here it's more like invoking faith uh, or, or developing faith in the heart of a listener so Paul is speaking and when Paul is speaking, what's happening? Faith is coming. Faith comes by hearing. So as faith is developing, you see the discernment that Paul has. So Paul observed, it says, intently uh, and saw that this man has faith to be healed. Uh, uh, and uh, once he discerned that, he gives a command. He says, uh, stand up straight on your feet. Uh, and then it happened. This man uh, leapt and walked. So in the other case, uh, Peter gave his hand and he raised him up. But in this case, there is a command which is issued. So there are all different ways of ministering. We cannot have a single formula. Uh, we have to be led by the Holy Spirit as Lubega was sharing. So this ministry happens and the man comes back. Do you see any other similarity uh, in Acts 3 and uh, Acts 14, Lystra account? In the response of the crowd.
I hope we remember what we have been discussing so far. How did the crowds respond initially in Acts 3? Okay, so the people look up to Peter and John. And you remember Peter said, why are you looking at us? As if, you know, we have done this. But uh, this has happened because of, uh, you know, faith in the name of Jesus. And that's how he uh, shared, you know, how the miracle took place in Acts chapter 3. Same way we find here that the moment a miracle takes place, the people over there, they are so excited. And they look at uh, Paul and uh, Barnabas, and in their Lyconian language, they start to call them uh, by the names of some Greek gods. So they uh, apparently, according to Greek mythology, there were uh, some gods that uh, had the property of incarnating into human beings, and uh, uh, you know they would they would come visit, they would make visits to the world. Uh, and uh, among that, you know, that set of gods were these gods known as uh, Zeus and Hermes. Uh, and um, so uh, from the mythology, they, they thought that those gods were visiting. That's how the miracle actually took place. And apparently between Zeus and Hermes, uh, uh, Hermes was the one who was uh, the speaker or the communicator. And uh, Zeus was a more you know, like a strong personality who um, invoked uh, a, a sense of uh, awe. Uh, and so they thought Barnabas would be Zeus and, uh, or uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, sorry, uh, but uh, Zeus and Hermes, okay? So they thought that these gods were the ones who have actually come. And uh, the right response whenever um, uh, God is ministering or visiting is to worship. Okay, that's the way we all are. We want to worship God. And they decided that they will worship Paul and Barnabas. So what did they do? Uh, they, um, uh, the, there was a priest apparently from the uh, temple of Zeus uh, who brought oxen and garlands to the gates intending to sacrifice with the multitude. So you can uh, imagine that uh, there was this sudden uh, excitement in the city and people are rushing to worship these so-called gods. Now, for ministers of God, um, it's kind of nice when uh, someone, uh, someone, you know, pats our back and says, you're doing a good job or uh, if a lot of attention is given to us for serving God. Uh, think about Paul and Barnabas. In this situation, people were ready to worship. Okay, but they responded just the way Peter and John responded. And Peter said, why are you looking at us as if we did this miracle? This has happened because of, uh, you know, uh, strength that has come because of the name of Jesus. So they gave credit to God and they were not um, self-centered or self-seeking to take the glory for themselves. And we see the same attitude with Paul and Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas, in fact, they were uh, uh, frustrated. They were angry. Uh, we are told that they tore their clothes and ran into the multitude, crying out, men, why are you doing these things? We also are men with the same nature as you and preach to you that you should turn from these unless useless things to the living God who made heaven uh, the earth, the sea, and all things that are in them. So they are reminding the people that men should not be worshipped. Only God deserves our worship. Only he is worthy. Uh, and that even ministers who are walking in the power of God should not try to take the glory of God or take the position of God. So that is very clear among all the ministers that you would see in the uh, uh, book of Acts here, okay, uh, and uh, yeah, so they preach a little bit more about God, uh, and they are presenting the picture to the uh, people of Lystra that God is a creator, okay, 
he's he's not a created being uh, he is a creator uh, and then you know they say things like uh, he gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons filling our hearts with food and gladness so basically they are letting them know that um, you know god is a creator he's bigger uh, than mere men and one needs to worship him all right so this has happened so there is this whole uh, 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 uproar right in the city and uh, they are trying to stop they're trying to stop uh, people from worshiping them so let's see what exactly happens after that so i'm coming to verse 19 here uh, and i'll read it it says then jews from antioch and iconium came there and having persuaded the multitudes they stoned paul and dragged him out of the city supposing him to be dead so this is continuing isn't it from sidia there is opposition uh, in uh, iconium they wanted to stone uh, paul and barnabas in Lystra, they managed, right? They actually did it. They stoned Paul, it says, and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. Who was treated like this? Stoned, dragged, Stephen, yeah. So look at this. Uh, it was Paul, remember? He was uh, at that point, uh, he was called by his Jewish name, Saul. Uh, and people were uh, 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 doing, people were persecuting Stephen in the leadership or through the leadership of Saul. But now we have this account uh, of uh, Paul. We generally talk uh, from his Roman name. Okay, uh, but the same thing or a similar thing that happened to Stephen is now happening to Paul. Paul is stored, he is dragged out of the city, uh, supposing him to be dead. Uh, now, was he really dead? You know, that's not clear. Uh, Luke, being the detailed doctor that he is, for whatever reason, uh, he doesn't give us clarity on that matter. Was he really dead or was he uh, almost seemed to be dead so anyway generally they would drag a person out of the city when they are dead okay so now we we are not clear whether he was actually dead however look at verse 20 it says uh, however when the disciples gathered around him he rose up and went into the city and the next day he departed with barnabas to Dabi. so uh, you know uh, luke just said it matter of factly in one sentence now let's stick together. Paul is stoned. Anybody who is stoned, okay, we get a small hurt, it's so painful, and we need time to recover. But something supernatural has taken place as far as Paul's body is concerned. He was stoned. Now, maybe he was really dead, or maybe he was close to being dead. Otherwise, the persecutors would not have. Um, yeah, dragged him out. So there was something serious in the situation. But what happened? You remember again Acts 12, the believers were praying for Peter and Peter supernaturally through an angel was rescued from the prison. The disciples gathered around him. That means that the disciples when they saw him in this condition would have prayed over Paul. They gathered around him and they prayed for him. Now, we don't know, did he resurrect or was he supernaturally healed in moments? How can a body which is um, uh, injured by stoning recover to an extent where Luke is writing, next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby as if you know, you have your itinerary, your schedule and even though Paul was stoned so badly, he's up and about. But a miracle took place. That's what Luke is trying to uh, uh, mention in those few lines that uh, Paul had a recovery in his body, supernatural, from injuries, from uh, uh, you know the limitations that came from stoning. 
So many wonderful things are actually taking place uh, in the lives of uh, God's people and uh, uh, the team which is ministering. So that is how, uh, you know, Paul exited Lystra. Think about this. Firstly, there's the passion for ministry and then they are ministering uh, in the uh, uh, right way, preaching, uh, supernatural power of God. But then they have to deal with the response of the people. Unfortunately, there is the unpleasant side of all the challenges and the difficulties. Uh, but they, they still manage. They manage everything and they keep going on. They keep moving on. Okay, so that's a very special quality for us as uh, ministers of God who are serving God. You know, uh, we deal with everything that comes our way, but we got to keep going on. Okay, we got to keep serving the Lord, got to keep pursuing the purpose of God for our lives, and uh, uh, we mustn't let anything stop us. That's how the uh, the attitude of Paul and Barnabas was. They didn't let anything stop them. They had decided. We'll go city to city. We'll preach. We'll have uh, you know uh, disciples uh, and uh, uh, church plants in each of these places, and they continue to do that. And uh, uh, you know they were so strong in the call that God gave them. So now they have moved on to Derby or Derb, however you want to pronounce that. Now coming to verse twenty-one, let's see all uh, that happens. Uh, in this place. So if someone can read from verse 21 to verse 28, we'll summarize that before we close off. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra. Iconian and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exalting them to continue in faith and saying, we must through many tribulation enter the kingdom of God. So when they had appointed elders in every church and praying with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. And after they had passed through Pisidia, they came to Paphelia. Now, when they had preached the word in Pegia, they went down into Atalia. At, at From there, they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work which they had completed. Now, when they had come and gathered, and gathered the church together, they reported that all God had done with them, and he had opened the doors the door of faith to the Gentiles. So they stayed there a long time with the disciples. Amen. All right, I'm just putting up a picture for us to see. So this is the end of the first missionary journey. We saw how they, um, you know, traveled around and then they again came back. Okay, uh, so you could you could see uh, the places, the regions over here. Uh, are you able to see? Okay, so Antioch, right? And uh, we saw how the journey went on from there, you know, Cyprus and all that happened. And then they went on to Perga, uh, and then uh, Sidia, Iconium, Lystra, Derby, right? Uh, and then what we are observing now is, you see, being a missionary, going to a place, winning souls for uh, God, um, uh, that's a wonderful work. But the role which Paul and team have, it is um, like we're developing the understanding that this is apostolic ministry. Okay, it's not just a missionary, just a missionary journey, go touch the place and come back. Because what they're doing is, once they are done with Derby, 
uh, or, or the they are going back okay in the same way that they came to the earlier cities as well and uh, what are they doing in those places they are strengthening the believers they are appointing leaders what is that that is apostolic ministry because there is a certain form of governance of the church plants uh, there is a certain evolution of structure in each of those church plants you see when they had gone and preached in these cities they would have had some set of believers right they could have just said okay be happy in the lord and become strong in the lord and that's it okay guys bye we're moving to the next place so that they on the map they can just keep putting okay we finished uh, iconium we finished uh, antioch of syria and then they could have just moved on but what does apostolic ministry do it's about uh, transforming uh, transforming the the whole mindset the culture uh, the kingdom culture right bringing in that kingdom culture uh, to each of the cities so that's what they did they went back to these same churches strengthened the believers i'm sure they would have strengthened them in the word in the work of the spirit and also they are picking leaders because now these churches must become like antioch you remember what they did in antioch they came to antioch they um, uh, a small team was there for one year they taught the people and then we saw how it became a multi um, uh, a cultural team you had uh, different people with various capabilities there were teachers there were prophets so that same pattern is continuing they are building up strong churches in all these uh, places and uh, then they are returning to their original place or the uh, the base church of apostle paul which is antioch and another thing that we saw there was uh, they gave an account of all the things that had taken place so they are happy to report you know of uh, what god has done so that's in that way it's nice to be connected to the base church because it's the base church uh, or uh, let's say our home church sometimes we use the term home church where we have our team where we have people who are praying for us or the sending out church right uh, and uh, they stay connected to that sending out church so uh, let's stop here class we'll come back and we'll move it to acts 15 okay so please stay on the call but i'm stopping the recording now thank you